Hey guys, Dave from Nerdarchy, four nerds, by nerds, hanging out with these nerds. Hey, I'm Nerdarchist Ryan. I'm Nerdarchist Ted. Nate the Nerdark. And today we want to do a, a video response, we haven't done one of these in a while, to Pro Jared on his D&D December. Uh, what's the name of the video you have written down? How to be a good DM. How to be a good DM, that's well, exactly well, it. In, uh, on the Facebook page, it was, I believe, uh, Pete Brett, who plays with us, he had, he had uh, shared the video and asked us to do a video response on it, that's why I had brought it up. Before we get into that, why don't you guys go down to the description below, sign up for the, uh, the newsletter, put your name, email in, you'll get uh, tips delivered straight to your inbox, as well as learn how to game with Nerdarchy. Okay, with that, let's let's tear into it. It's 20 minutes. It's a decent video. Uh, Jared gives, gives quite a few good tips. I, you know, I think things we've said over the past uh, 700 videos. videos, 700 videos <laughs> yeah, or so. yeah they so, def he definitely included a lot of things I agree with. So there's, yeah, I, I agree. There's a lot of stuff that that he said that's that's very useful. My my biggest problem was his line of as the DM, it's your sole responsibility to bring fun well, well so, so in a nutshell right it, it's the jobs dm to bring fun to the game um always say yes always say yes don't do don't use cut scenes don't use cut scenes um there's ways to to make uh you know things more interesting um uh interactive stuff in in, the interactive camera, stuff you is... want to be able to repurpose your 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 content. Well, give them agency such that if your thing doesn't get used, you can just repurpose it later on for something else. Right. Yeah. Um, and then be prepared to change or be willing to change because the players aren't going to always do what you want. And tell the jerk off player not to be a jerk off. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's very important. Very important. Which everyone has their different you know levels of what that what person is, is being a jerk off. So is. so there was like the only two points that I I would I'd be like I'm not so sure if I agree like cutscenes. And you know, and the DM, and like Ted said, the DM always being in charge of the fun. Oh, he also said it's hard to be the DM. <laughs> DMing is it, it is pretty difficult in that like you're you're the ref, you're the sensory organs to all the players in a way. You're only gonna you, you have to multitask a shit ton as the GM. It's that's and that's the hard thing. And about it. from his perspective of the DM being in charge of making sure it's fun, like. Like, You're the only one that has to put prep time. He's in. putting a lot of he's putting a lot of responsibility on himself. So, yeah, I would think it's hard if I was that. On you know what I always I feel like that. Like if if I had like a, a flat session, like I feel like well, what did I do as the GM that was bad? Oh yeah, there's the always something you could yeah. do to to puff up the session and make it better. But there's also a lot of things the players should really be doing to to also. I mean, you can't make somebody have fun. You can get them. To, you might be able to make them come to the table by driving them there. You might be able to entice them with pizza to stay, but you can't make them have fun. I keep a wooden sword around just for certain instances. <laughs> <laughs> a wooden great sword. You lie, yeah. but so but Ted does keep a wooden sword. <laughs> well, so Ted has it, so I can just use it. Yeah, right. So you have something. So as as the DM, you're guiding the actions at the table, and I've had DMs you know, that I've played with that. They just bounce the, you know, they're, they're just the bounce board for the players' ideas. And the players have had entire sessions that they've created it, they've done it, and the DM just, you know, spoon feeds them, you know, the, the, the interactive that's, that's necessary based on what their actions are. So I've had, I've had times where it's like, I don't, I don't prep anything. What do you guys want to do? All right, great, let's go do that. And off it happens, off it goes. The players created the fun, I just guided the story. Um, they brought the ingredients. You made the soup. Yeah, and you yeah. you can also be in like a mediocre campaign, but if you're in, if you have other players that are really hardcore role players and, and really uh, good and fun to play with, they they can totally turn that around. Even if your DM's kind of mediocre. And and we've had that that happen as well, where we've had a fun night where the DM sadly he didn't he didn't bring it that night, and we're like, well, we can either have fun at the table in spite of what the DM is doing, or we can just, you know, have a crappy night. And we said, no, we're not going to let that happen. And so, then we asked him from the DM chair. <laughs> well, that happened too. But. <laughs> well, we were very much more assholes back then. <laughs> we've, we've mellowed in our own way. <laughs> so our I would say if uh, the things that Projer bring up, uh, I would say that the things like saying yes, and if you had a DM saying no all the time, and you had a person being, the, one of the things with the cutscenes. I'm not into doing cutscenes that I have to do no matter what that the players can interact with. There's only so many slick ways to do cutscenes that are not going to be effed up. Like, say if it's something where like they use a survival check and they 
Lord of the Rings, right? Where where uh, Aragorn's like seeing the, the like the tracks that the the halflings took or whatever. Like uh-huh. so, it's basically you can make a cutscene of like what was going on because his his survivor or wilderness lore is letting him retrace the steps of what happened in that battle. So you can basically have a cutscene cued by that su- success, which is more track. like a inference of a flashback. It, yeah, it's yeah. like a flashback, but yeah. you could like retell the story, like yeah, like say something you wanted to put in there, or like same thing with like a bit of lore, like you could mm-hmm. tell this thing. And since it already happened, yeah. then they, they, they can't, can't interact with the thing it. that's yeah. already okay. happened. Yeah. So so yes, you can you can put in narrative descriptions that you can literally write out and read, uh, if you don't if you're not the excuse me, the type to memorize it. Um yeah, so there's no problems with that, but I think the point that he was trying to make was if a player, if, you, if you've got a scene that you want to unfold and a player wants to interrupt, let him interrupt, you know, you can you can warn him that it might not be the best course of action. You know, David run a session where he was doing a cutscene and had he not stopped players, you know, the party would have been murdered. Yeah, well, yeah, basically, there's, there's definitely three of us that, like, my character, being an arcanist, like, had a sense that, like, this is something beyond our control, and, like, three of the, par- three of the party members had that gamist mentality of, oh, the GM put this challenge in front of us, therefore we must be, actually have suitable ability to, 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 to handle it. it. Right. But no, no, it was a fucking demigod, <laughs> you know, <laughs> so. Yeah, I feel like, like, see, you can use a cutscene, but one is you can't use it you can't overuse it, or it's going to become an old hat really quick. And it'll just be annoying to your players. Yeah, it'll just be annoying. It's just you, like, showboating. Like, in the instance that you guys described, I used it at, like, basically, it was at the end of a ritual. So it was, in my opinion, like, there wasn't even a point to interrupt it. Right. So so whatever was going was going to happen. You guys were in the distance a little ways. So, like, you definitely could. You, there wasn't enough way. You couldn't possibly have moved to what was going on fast enough. Right. You were up high on a ridge and and a little ways away. Two, it would have just been unwise. And here's the thing, like, where sometimes you, as a DM, I feel like you have to step in and go, no, your character, even though you, the player, want to do this thing, your character actually has the stats and the skill set that says, yo, you have more knowledge and you need this information right. before you make that decision. Right. Now you saw players that may try and do it anyway. <laughs> And, and run to their death. So yeah, it's like, oh, damn! You're giving me all these warning signs. I'm just gonna keep ignoring them. So he, he he does say the biggest the biggest tip is to say yes to the player, regardless of what they want to do. Tell tell them yes. You know, he uses the example of arm wrestling in Albert, and that you can warn the player that. You know, the tri- Albears may not understand the rules of arm wrestling, <laughs> which is yes. the best quote from that video. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Which which was awesome. But as a DM, you can't always say yes. You know, there are, there are times when you have to say no, um, you know, or, you know, addend the, the, the yes. You can, you know, say, what, what, is, uh, what is our three? Uh, yes, 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 and uh, yes, but. Yeah. So you've got, you know, three different ways to say it. Um, well, I, I disagree in the sense that you can always say yes. The outcome is another matter entirely. Sure. Like, I'm going to charge the dragon. Yes, you can absolutely well, do that. Well, <laughs> the, the no comes in with, like, if people are, like, basically outright cheating. Like, oh, I have this Vorpal Sword. And it's like, well, I never gave you a Vorpal Sword. You never had the opportunity to get <laughs> yeah, Exactly. So the no comes in for, like, out and flagrant cheating. Well, like, or, you can, or you can just absolutely go, yeah, oh, sure, you draw that sword. It's cursed. <laughs> or no, it's not, not even it's cursed. You, they think it's a Vorpal Sword. Uh, David Don Quixote. <laughs> Sort of thing going. Not only is the player delusional, but apparently the character is too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I rolled a twenty. Uh, oh, so, so you think his head fell off, and, and when he stabs you anyway, yeah. you don't understand how he's fighting with his head still on. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, that would make a great cursed item, though. Like, it has the illusion that the head fell off, and like it's still fighting your head. It's like this undead menace. How do I make it stop? <laughs> Why are they all undead menaces? Yeah. <laughs> uh, now I want to make that item. Yeah. <laughs> I think uh, you, in, uh, in previous editions, they definitely had uh, something of delusion. Hmm. I don't know if it was a ring of delusion. I think it was a ring of delusion, and you put it on, and basically the DM would just roll a, sec- a second time on the magic uh, ring table, and that's what you always thought it was. Like the ring of Featherfall is not a ring of Featherfall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, oh man, don't worry about this. I got this. I'm going to take the ni- nose dive off the 100 yeah. foot precipice. <laughs> I'm jumping off this bridge in style, guys. Yeah. He's fought a lot faster than he said that ring should be. Yeah. Oh, God. There's blood everywhere. <laughs> Don't fall like that. Cleric! Long. Cleric! I need a cleric! Yeah. No, you need uh, a shovel and a sack. <laughs> so, um... You know, he gave some, some cool 
cool instances of how to make your encounters more interesting. Uh, how to basically say, you know, if you come upon an encounter, the monsters shouldn't just be standing around. They should be doing something. Um, so Which is a great point for making your world more real to the, the yeah, actual players. Yeah, because, you know, monsters aren't just people, you know, waiting there, punching a clock, waiting to get attacked by adventurers to hand out those sure hand out the that? Lead. Unless you're playing Munchkin. Like, then it's perfectly reasonable. How else do they all them? hang out in that dungeon together? <laughs> hmm. um, you know, and then, you know... Actually, if I was running a munchkin S game, I literally would have the scene where the monster is punching <laughs> punching out of work, and then, like, the party goes to fight it, and like, no, I'm off no. the clock. Like, I'm not, I'm not working. There's rules. <laughs> People, they won't play over... They won't pay overtime. He points to the OSHA chart that says that he can't work. Yeah. yeah. Well, and, Sorry, and I, turn, I turned my treasure into that guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And the sign next to it says absolutely no overtime, no <laughs> matter what. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm not going to do this, guy. Um, and then he also says that, you know, creatures, for the most part, Part, unless it says so in the monster manual or have a reason, aren't going to fight to the death. So monsters will run away, they'll surrender, they'll beg for their life. You know, there's lo lots of things that monsters will do to, to again, make them seem more to not real. die. Yeah, to not realistic die. psychology it makes sense. So, yeah, there, uh, yeah some... absolutely. Like, it's it should be very rare that your monster fights to the death. Like, maybe if it's like they still have the majority of their numbers, they'll fight because they think maybe they'll turn the tide. Um, yeah, like I've done some interesting things with the the, the cringe adventure where like. There were two goblins that were contemplating like jumping off this precipice to get away from the p party, but then two of the party members both rolled ones, and I had them like both in succession fling the rapiers off the side, and then that made the goblins make the decision to stay and fight because they were two weaponless, unarmed guys. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. But again, like it, I showed like some thought on the monsters' part. That's cool. So any other points that you guys want to want to do? No, um, you know, basically. Uh, so I was like, you know, there's a lot of good tips in that video for Absolutely. Uh, for a beginning uh, beginner DM should check it out. And also, Pro Jared has some other videos you might want to go check out. I'll put a link to his channel in the description below, uh, more specifically this video. And then you can sift through his stuff and watch what you want to watch while you're at it. Like, share, and subscribe. You can check out Nerdarchy the store and get some sweet Nerdarchy swag. While you're there, check out the articles. You can also check out the Facebook memes over on Facebook. So until next time, stay, stay nerdy. nerdy.